I also love starting with a little bit of extra material because I can take the Superfly face cutter and skim off the top coat. Looks beautiful. Customers always love this. 2,700 inches a minute. I just jog over it. It's a lot free, 20% jog uh, rate on the keyboard. And then we'll set our C0. Take a look at that, folks. <laughs> take, take a look at that. Look how crazy that is. You can see my hands, fingers like that. It's just a beautiful finish. Okay, let's set our Y0. Now, none of these honestly have to be that close because remember, we've got a pretty good amount of material. I do like to set the Y in Y though because if you ever need to re uh, re zero, it's not, uh, it's a lot easier. There's our Z zero. I just double check it off of after running the Superfly. Now, the X zero, we'll set it, but um, it'll be pretty bogus because uh, there's a, some curve to that part, so it'd be hard to refine it, but that's okay. Here we go, folks. You can see that's pretty conservative, more lead in than we probably need, but not too worried about it. You know, this isn't a production run. If it were, we would fix that stuff. Cuts beautifully though. I really like this three flute half inch carbide rougher. I actually did a separate video on it, taking it to the max where we sort of push this cutter a lot. Uh, but it's my go-to tool for uh, hogging out material. If I get, uh, if I do end up building a new building, I am looking forward to moving the air compressor uh, outside or somewhere else. Or if anyone wants to send me a free rotary screw compressor, I would gladly send you my address. No joking aside. Um, no joking aside. One of the things uh, I've had a lot of questions about, and I don't know why lately, but a lot of people have emailed and messaged asking about the coolant system. So I'm going to do a little video on their CNC coolant basics here. That'll come out uh, probably the first of January. I was hoping to release it uh, over the Christmas break, but uh, I am actually right now enjoying time with my family up in Massachusetts. Um, this footage is being filmed a few weeks ahead of time. Um, but for you guys who are sitting here enjoying this, uh, hopefully the day before Christmas, I hope you're enjoying some lovely eggnog and uh, time with family uh, right now. And by the way, Merry Christmas to everybody. I love it. Look at the coolant line, how you can see its reflection from the Superfly base mill. I remember a few guys sort of asking or giving me a hard time about, oh, pushing one insert into, uh, into uh, you know, material like that. What is it? And it's both a face mill and a, and a, um, and a inserted end mill. So you can hog off with it or you can, you know, skim cut for a spectacular surface finish as you guys just saw right, or as you're seeing right here. In fact, we, uh, we had to, Jared had to move some material on the bridge port the other day and he asked what end mill I wanted to use and I said, you know, it's up to you, bud. You, you, you make those decisions. And he thought about using the roughing end mill that we're using right now and then he thought, well, let me try the Superfly. And we put it in the, uh, in the bridge port for the first time and it ran great as well. So anything with a, uh, this supports either R8 or three quarter inch uh, tool holding can use the Superfly. So moving on, we're doing our roughing pass on the profile. Won't be much cut here as we go through the already cut curves. In fact, let's fast forward through the rest of this part here and we'll jump back in on the finish end mill.
I wanted to mention the rocket end mill we used and then actually that um, number 32 tool as well. I wanted to mention that rocking end mill is a great example of uh, a difference I found between beginner machinists and intermediate machinists, which is when you're using a tool a lot and you don't need to have a sharp corner, switch to a uh, radius corner end mill because not having that really sharp point, that's by far the weakest point of an end mill, the most likely to chip. And when you don't need it, you can get a much better tool life out of a out of an end mill out of an end mill that uh, that has a corner radius. So so think about those if you're if you're looking uh, if you're newer to this. So think about those if that's some uh, you know if you're newer to machining and are interested in. So think about think about picking up a radius end mill if uh, if you don't have one in your toolbox. So, sorry for that bad audio. I was pausing because I was thought I had some chip weld when we drilled those holes, but it was just the, the wear of reflection of the drill bits. Um, it's actually fine. The speed and feed was 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 acceptable. Now we're about done. We just have to flip the part and machine off the extra material. Don't measure. Don't put the part in and measure the top and assume that the thickness is right. No reason to add an extra chance of error. Just take your Heimer and set that at zero and then like so and then in Mach 3 we will just say that that is negative 0.5 and now I don't really care where the top of my part is per se because we're just going to take this off um, by jogging around Okay, sorry folks, my camera ran out of memory. Um, we're back though, so we finished, and the uh, part looks great. So that's an example of how you make it. I grabbed a gauge pin, pin, if we try to plug the hole here, you get a nice pop test, so pretty good on that reamed hole. And yeah, so hopefully that helps. Hopefully that was a good instructional uh, choose your own CNC adventure. The, some of the other parts are going to be a little bit more complicated and involved, so excited to dive into those. If you have enjoyed this, folks, I do appreciate the comments, the likes, the thumbs up, and the shares. A very, very Merry Christmas to everybody out there. Take care. I will see you soon.